Valentine's. Okay, it is. <laughs> it's Thursday. It's Thursday. Um, whew, dark hallway. It looked like a scary movie, didn't it? <laughs> um, it is Thursday. We are back from our little trip. Yeah, just just go into a hospital count as a VK. That's our first time we thought about it. That's our first time being in a hotel since February 2020 when I went to Emory University. And it um right outside Atlanta in Atlanta. I don't remember now what me and Fat Man were trying to talk about where is Emory the auxiliary location we had gone to. Um, well, no, I guess it was the main, it was the main hospital because it had the CDC in it. And that is right before the lockdown of COVID. So, yeah, well, I know 29, 2020, yeah, 2020, February 2020. So, it was right before the lockdown of COVID. Yep. I'm missing that year. Everything before COVID of 2020 and basically everything after of 2020 is just kind of gone when I think about December well that would be right no I don't I don't even know <laughs> that man was trying to fill in the pieces for me and it just didn't it still don't click I mean I just it don't anywho because that could be a whole video <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of a whole video question, everybody's commenting they love the and honey. Y'all have got to try that beef and broccoli recipe. I.e., that leads me to did the menu link work for y'all? It works on my end, but I'm wondering if it's because I have it stored in my computer anyway. Does that make sense? Um, if anybody could link on, if you can get to the menu. Hey, sweet girl. Hi. You slept late, huh? What time is it? It is. She did. She slept so good. 7.36. Some almost 8. Uh. Did you have a good sleep? No. You did. She did. She slept so good. I knew not to wake her up. We figured two things. A, the mattress is working out great. I'll have to show y'all here in a minute. Um, two, she probably did not sleep good while we were gone. If we're gone, she, oh honey, she met us at the car. Yes, yes, she loves her mama. She loves her mama. And she's been so afraid. And I'm trying to assure her that everything's going to be fine. Um, yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, her bed. Go back and show them your bed. Situations have stayed. Uh oh. I'll turn the thing in. There. I, her bed is still the same as far as. Um, it's her mattress. We got her a new mattress. So, uh, we got it off of Amazon. And, uh,. Okay, that's her sheet protector. I was going to say, wait, why is it sagging? But yeah, it's got like the Euro memory foam top. Um, and then the coil springs. And it is a cool foam. So it's supposed to help keep her cool. Um, and we've asked her if she wants new bedding. And she said, no, I am going to order her some new sheets. That's, I'm looking at them now. It's like, yeah, baby girl needs some new sheets. So, um, and she really needs a new bedspread. That or I need to wash it. Um, I'll wash it with that OxyClean. Let's turn off her light. Um, but yeah, she's sleeping good with that new mattress. So, anywho, um, yeah, Today is going to find me just kind of getting things back in order. Um, the girls did a great job as far as they didn't catch the joint on fire. No police reports were filed that we know of. 
<laughs> uh, no injuries occurred on or off the property that we know of. <laughs> So, um, but today it's just going to find me trying to get things back in order. Um, i got to figure out how to get those back up in our closet on the top shelf. Getting them down was not the hard part. Getting them down, you just kind of pull and move back and let them fall. Getting them up is a totally different story. <laughs> so, but I'm going to kind of start doing my morning routine, getting things in in place for me to kind of really get going with my day got laundry to do all the things all the things so come along with me as i tackle getting my life back in order from a trip I'm in the bathroom now I'm just kind of picking up and doing my swish and swipe where I just kind of wipe down the sink area wipe down the toilet close the shower curtain put things away that I've used this morning getting ready oh and to those of you that like my pearl headband thank you I got it um, yesterday at TJ Maxx on our way home um, we had stopped I was looking for the skinny syrups the skinny girl syrup um, not skinny girl, just skinny syrups. I'll get it right in a minute. Um, and I'd heard where they are way cheaper than Amazon. And yes, ma'am, it took some hunting around to find the salted caramel, which is what I was looking for. But they also had the pe uh, the peppermint. Um, and I want to say that was the skinny girl. I'll double check when I go in the kitchen. But um, I had been looking for, and like I said, I got in the hazelnut for my infusion nurse. I cannot find that bottle nowhere. <laughs> Somewhere in this house, there's a thing of hazelnut sugar-free syrup. <laughs> but I got her another bottle to take to her tomorrow. Um, I go for my infusion tomorrow. So, yeah, um, I'm just going to kind of... My morning routine for the bathroom is just pull the shower curtain to, wipe down the sink, wipe down the potty, just kind of get it ready just in case. You never know. Um, we've had drop-in company before. I'll do the same to the hall bath. Um, and it just feels better knowing that if anybody drops in and they need to use the facilities, I don't have, oh my God, what does it look like? Is it a mess? Is it a wreck? You know. Those type things. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the headband TJ Maxx, it was like $4.99, I want to say. Yeah, $4.99. So not a bad price at all. Not for the pearl kind. Um, but all right, let me get to swishing and swapping. I'm going to do laundry. I swished and swiped my bath. I've got to go do the hall bath. Um, I came in the laundry room. This is my first time being in here since we got back. I met with this. Yeah. Yeah. Becca has a habit. If there are things in the washer, like if I have wet kitchen towels or you know, a load that I've kind of collected, not really quite a full load, but if I have like wiping towels or cleaning towels or a pool towel and I'll stick it in the washer and I'll just have it in there and I'll add two, you know, uh, and then I'll, once it's got like a full load, then I'll wash them up. She has a habit, if there's anything in there, she is not washing it. She will take it out, put it on the floor, and let it collect for you to do your turn. Then again, they might have been in the dryer. 
I don't remember if I had started this load or if it was something that well I guess the one way I could tell is look at the napkins because the napkins whenever I put our cloth napkins in to be washed they're pretty they're pretty dirty yeah so I guess I can look at the napkin and tell and see you know if it's needing washing or not pet peeve of mine though um, if it was something of hers in the washer I'd wash it. I'd just go ahead and add to, wash it, dry it, fold it, and then put it in her room for her to put away. Yeah. Consideration is a one-way street. I'm just saying. <laughs> I just had to vent. <laughs> okay. They are dirty because this napkin is, yeah. If I was to wash it, it would not have little crusties of food on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that lid. And it's like a full load because it's got sheet, it's got napkins, it's got um, pool towels, kitchen towels. It's just a menagerie. So, I'm going to get those going and then I'll do my clothes. While I'm here and excuse the noise of the fan, this has really helped keeping this room cool though. Um, we used to have one in here and Becca, I think, took it to uh, Bruton. So, but this has really made a huge difference in keeping this room cool, which in turn helps us keep our freezers cool. So, tonight I'm supposed to do the bacon wrapped chicken. Bacon wrapped ranch chicken, I think is what it's called. Something like that. I know it was bacon wrapped chicken. One, we have eaten chicken a lot during the last two, three days. Yeah. Of doing. Um, like the night before we left out of town, we went to Jack's. Fat Man had chicken. Um, I had the, the chicken strips maybe you're about to have a hamburger but uh and then while we were gone i had chicken tenders and then um yeah just we had a lot of chicken and i don't have any bacon for the bacon wrapped part i looked at getting bacon and it was just more than i wanted to pay or could pay so um i think i think tonight we're gonna do pork chops Pork is something, yeah. I'm just going to get out these pork chops. And this is where you don't have to be married to your menu plan. If something has come along and you have not made a meal, or that's like that beef and broccoli, it had been on my menu for three months. And just things kept happening, and I never did do it. And, you know, I'm so glad we did though. It was so good. If y'all, you gotta try it. You really, like I said, comment down below if you can get the menu to work. Also comment down below if you can't get it to work. Um, but I'm just gonna take these pork chops out and I think I'm just gonna do good old simple fried country style pork chops. Um, from in the grease, baby. That, or I might do the air fryer. I have not air fried any meat. And so, um, I know Six Sister Stuff was talking about meat in the air fryer. So, I'm, I'm going to try it in the air fryer. I sure am. Um, okay. So, I got to get something done with this kitchen just last night when me and that man got home yesterday evening. Um, the girls just kind of did like, oh, I had some of my leftover um, poppy seed chicken from Dale's. Carol Beth ate it. I had some leftover um, chicken nuggets and waffle fries that Becca had made from the night before. So, see, that was more chicken. Carol Beth had poppy seed chicken. So, we're chicken out. So, I'm just going to do some simple fried pork chops for tonight. Um, I've got like a mess over here I need to clean up. 
not sponsored, but I'm loving these containers that I got on one of our Sam's orders. They were a little pricey on the front end, but it's saving us in the long end. This is still just as fresh as the day I put it in there. I need to put this in the cereal keeper. Y'all know how I am about that. Ugh. Cereal keepers are for a reason. <laughs> oh, here's that. Um, now, this is the Skinny Girl Peppermint Syrup. Even Fat Man said that he might have to try that. I thought that would be good. And then this is the Skinny Syrup, the Salted Caramel. And they were only $3.99. Now, online, way more expensive. Like, way more. And for that size bottle, yes, yeah, 25.4 ounce. So I got those to go in coffees, and then I found, and this is in a glass bottle, so I got to be careful. I found the sugar-free coconut syrup, and it was $3.99. Never heard of that brand before. Luca? Luca. Never heard of that brand before, but I got that to make dirty Cokes. I've not had a dirty Coke in forever. Take a Diet Coke. Your sugar-free coconut, yeah, coconut syrup, and then a lime. Y'all, hush your mouths. All right, so let me quit running mine and get these dishes going. zone cleaning and I did not even realize the kitchen is my zone for this week I just wanted it clean I mean it just needed a good move everything wipe and scrub it down clean it and then I realized oh yeah this week is my kitchen zone so I've scrubbed the cabinets the outsides I've wiped down all the appliances the outsides I am letting my um uh, oven door soak I, I need to clean my oven but I think that's gonna be a weekend thing um there we go I'm plugging it back up I'm have to charge my my battery um but I did want to come on and this is something for me I'm getting on to me well, I'm not really getting on um yeah letting the light bulb moment happen when I was cleaning over there where like our peanut butter and our sandwich bread and all that stuff is, cereals, there are two jars of peanut butter open. One was over here near my produce and one was over there where it's supposed to be. But it was hidden in all the chaos. While I was cleaning all that up, I found my basket that had hot chocolate packets and candy canes in it. It's July in Alabama. We're in the high 90s, y'all. I don't think we're going to need hot chocolate. I'm just saying. <laughs> and then I had all these loose, well, not loose, but all these drink mixes, the water enhancers that we just love. Um, I'm working on my strawberry watermelon, y'all. And they're sugar-free. And it just adds, just, and I don't ever use that much. I've got my ice water going for the day. Um, and I just do, like, 
two good squirts for this big of a cup. I like mine just to give like a hint of flavor. I don't like it overpowering. And I'll just kind of stir it in. And during the course of the day, I'll just refill my water. And eventually by, I don't know, noon, what, it's nine now? By noon, it will be more water. I mean, you'll barely be able to taste it. So about lunchtime, I'll maybe do another squirt or two. Then again, I might just go straight water. But there was no sense in me having major real estate caught up with hot chocolate packets. They've been over there for a while. And I've been meaning to, for a while, getting them put back in the hot chocolate box over there at the pantry and getting this, my, my drink enhancers organized. There were some over here near the sink. There were some over there near the cups. You know, uh, yeah, there's no sense in that. It took me all of 10 seconds to put the hot chocolate packets back in the box. I threw the candy canes away because, hello, we're in July. Those were from Christmas. Yeah. If they hadn't been eaten by now, they ain't gonna be eaten. You know what I'm saying? So, drink enhancers are in here. I'll put it back over there near the cups. That's something else I kind of need to sort of go through, but might happen today, might not. I'm just saying. You're supposed to only spend like an hour in your zone. Like I said before, I'm trying to do Fly Lady, but not do Fly Lady. Yeah. I'm not going to be strict with it, but it does give me an idea of, okay, I'm going to do the kitchen this week. If I don't get anything else other than my basic cleaning, like bathrooms, um, you know, laundry, hit the vacuum once during the course of the week, you know, my robot vacuum can do at least every other day. Yeah, yeah. I'm loving that thing, y'all. But anywho, if you have those little spots that you've been procrastinating or putting off, tackle it today. Tackle it. We can do this. We can do this. Okay, it is later in the afternoon. It's like 4.30. Um, I am going to get started on supper, but I do want to show an update of my kitchen. Kind of proud of what I did. Yeah. Um, cleaned all the countertops. Like I said, I organized my drink mixes, got that done, worked up here. I need to, I guess, really put those up there where they'll be kind of out of way, but then they won't be seen, so I don't know. Um... If y'all are looking for good candles, I'm just saying, not sponsored by any means, but she was a good friend of mine when we went to Hainville Baptist Church. Lion Candles, um, Kim Lion, L-Y-O-N, and it's lioncandles.com. She has homemade, I mean, her business has grown over the course of time, like truly grown. They are soybean based candles and they are wonderful scents. I got the Spanish moss and it's just a good clean smell. It's a very clean burn candle. Let's see, I'm going to relight it. I had it burning this morning when I was doing my cleaning. Um, it has a wonderful throw to it. Um, yeah. Like, I'll have it here. This is usually where I'll leave my lit candles. I'll put it here. It'll kind of flame will die down in a minute. Um, but it is fantastic. With them being soybean, uh, soy based. Soy based. Yeah. Um, they're clean burn. They don't leave smoke. Um, it's just a very good, really good candle. Um, I love all of her smells. I uh, have not ever had a bad one. I actually ordered it online now that I don't go to church there anymore. And they kind of, I think, quit going to that church. They went more so closer to their home. Um, but it was just hard to kind of get to, um, you know, 
get an order placed. So I found out you can order online, and I was just so tickled that you could. Um, if you're ever in Montgomery, Alabama, she sells them at Rosemont Gardens. Um, and I just never make a chance to get in there to get one. So I was tickled to death that I could get online and order them. So, but yeah, I'll go over and look at LionCandles.com. And think about placing an order. You will not be disappointed by any means. All right, right now I'm just kind of picking up some loose end stuff. I washed Fat Man's cup. Um, he got him a new cup yesterday. Um, they called a day to schedule my stress test. Yeah. And don't know, we're still, it's still up in the air of if they can do it same day as my pre-op. Um, or not. So we shall see. But yeah, I'm fixing to get started on supper. I'm going to do those grilled, not grilled, Lord have mercy, fried pork chops. <laughs> and I'm going to show y'all the true southern way of frying them. Yeah. Like I said, I can... Oh. Sorry. I guess if I break it, I ain't got to clean it, do I? <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said before, I can do that southern draw. I've, I've learned how to rein it in some, um, but I don't like reining it in. I like using my southern talent. Um, yeah, <laughs> I just, I can do, I can do redneck southern. I can do highfalutin southern. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. I can do backwoods country so that I on a day I you bomb it now. <laughs> yeah. It'll be okay. It will. It'll be alright. I'm getting ready to start chops. Okay, I'm getting ready to start breading my pork chops to fry them. I'm gonna fry them in olive oil. That's what I got. Um I'm gonna go ahead and kinda get my heat started. I'm going to put it like medium high. Um, they're my pork chops. They're not the extra thin, but they aren't very thick either. Um, I'd say they're about three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch bone in. Um, they were something that we'd gotten at Sam's. And dividing off that package, I've got plain all-purpose flour right here and two eggs beaten up with a little bit of milk just a smidge of milk I'm going to add some garlic powder to my um, flour about like that I'm going to add some to me just garlic and pork just go excellent together that's usually what I do wind up, and I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit of parsley. Just, I don't know. I don't know what it does to it. It might not do anything. And then a smidge. I was about to open up where it was going to be more than a smidge. A black pepper. I've got coarse ground black pepper. And I like a good bit of pepper on my pork just to give it good seasoning. I've got to go with our meal tonight. I am I'm just going to kind of mix this together to kind of incorporate it all together. There we go. That's about right. I've rinsed these chops in water. All right, I'm going to cut them in the flour and just kind of press. You don't rub. And then I'm going to take this chop and I'm going to dip it in the egg mixture. Get it kind of good and coated. Alright, now I'm going to put it, let it kind of drip off. See how I'm letting it drain? Now I'm going to put it back in the flour mixture and I'm going to press. Press into it. It's like a double coating. Alright. Alright. So, and I meant to get a platter. Hold on. Bear with me, people. 
I dusted my cabinet with flour, but that's okay. All right, I'm just going to put him on a plate. Get a couple more done up. One of these actually looks like a pork steak. Um, I'll show you the difference here in just a second. I'm trying to get them. All right, again, flour, pat, pat, kind of press in. Press. Get it good and coated. Shake the excess off. Put it in your egg mixture. Make sure it's coated good. Let it drain off. Back in the flour. And I know they say you're supposed to keep like one hand for your dry and one hand for your wet. I can't do that. I'm an all-in girl. <laughs> I'm all in with it. <laughs> oh, all right. So we're gonna shake that off, get it to the plate, and I'm just gonna kind of keep doing this until I got all of them. Okay, I'm coming up to the one that's a pork steak. See how it's shaped just a little bit different. It's got this extra piece over here. I am. I think I'm gonna go ahead and pull this extra off. Uh, I can get my hands wiped off enough. I don't think I can. All right. And this is a cool trick. Scissors are your best kitchen friend. Do you see I'm just taking, well, I'm taking scissors and I'm just cutting. Do you see how that cut? I cut that piece off because really and truly it's just fat and bone. So, I'm going to cut it off. So, now you're almost wound up with a pork chop. Well, it's a little bit more than pork chop. It's here, fat, and then here. So, but it's still going to be good. It's still going to be good, y'all. Um, I've got tea going, so I'm watching it. To go with our meal, I'm doing the pork chops, and then I'm going to do baked potato. And, like I said... I've got to where now I do um, the yellow, the, the golden, the yellow potatoes, they just are so much better to me. Now that I've had those instead of russets, um, they just, I don't know, they just bake up better. They aren't as dry. Oh, that one's going to be good. It's coated really well. All right, got two more to do. All right, so flour, flour, pat it in, turn back over and pat, egg, except some mixture, it's two eggs, and a splash of milk, I'm going to let it drain off, back to my flour, I'm going to kind of pat it, I'm watching that tea, all right, but we're going to have baked potatoes, and, um, green beans. It's been a while since we had, well, you know, we had it the other night at Jack's, but it's been a while since I've made green beans. Um, again, gonna do this flour. I look like I've been doing a kindergarten uh, pro art project with this flour on my, stuck to my hands, but that's all right. It's gonna be good, y'all. It's made with love. All right, drain that egg. I'll put it back in your flour. Just pat it in. That's like if you're putting on uh, seasoning on meat, don't rub it in. You're just coating it. You're just rubbing it off. You pat. You press it in. You want to make it stick to it, whether it be a dry rub or... That's why I wish they wouldn't call them rubs because you aren't over teeth. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Come on hands, let's get clean now. And it makes a messy kitchen. I wish I would have thought about that before I cleaned it up so good because now I gotta clean it up again. But that's all right, that's all right. It's gonna be good y'all. And I like using paper plates for my flour dredge part because I can just, look at there, fold that up, throw it away. 
I'm going to take this and just pour it down the sink. Rinse that bowl out. I'm going to put these scissors in the sink. All right, a teaspoon. I'll clean this up in a minute. All right, now. Let's see if our oil is done. And it's probably not. I don't know. You can hear a little splat. I'm going to get a couple of Scott towels. I'm going to go ahead and try to wipe this flour up. While that grease is finished getting hot. Ooh, I just made a glue mess on my clean counters. Ooh. Flour and water do not mix. <laughs> uh, when it mixes, it makes glue is what it does, y'all. I just glued a Scott towel to the countertop. All right. Now, that cleaned up. I was hoping I had a little bit of water on my hands. All right, now listen. Did you hear that? Take water and just kind of... And if you hear that pop, you ready, Mama. You ready. You don't want to put it in cold grease. All right, I can turn it down a little bit because we don't want it to burn. Can you hear that? Ooh, that's good right there, y'all. Yeah, pop a little bit. You don't really pop on ya. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get my way that I'm gonna drain it. My little lights keep falling off on my counters, my, my cabinets. And I think I've ordered the right light bulbs. Oh, really? Well, that ain't right. These are what my chops are looking like now that they're getting brown. When I'm browner than that, and you can still see off the pinkish and the blood popping up. So it still needs to keep doing. And I've got like on medium high. Like it, you know. It's there on my stove top. If you're that sizzle, you want to keep it sizzling. You don't want to grease fire, but you want it sizzling. Um, I only have two more left to go. Um, in the, the green beans, I just dumped some butter in them. Usually I will do brown sugar and mustard or bacon and, um, mustard or bacon and brown sugar <laughs> or bacon, brown sugar, and mustard. Those are like over the top. But these, I'm just doing simple butter. Um, they're good. I like them that way. I want to have enough 
flavor coming from the pork chops, not to overpower. I don't want everything being just season, season, season. You want to pick that one thing that you really want to pop with your meal, and that's what you want to draw the most attention to. So, um, I'm picking my pork chops. And the way I'm going to drain them, I'm not going to put them on paper towel. Here's how I'll put them on paper towel. But I've got a baking rack, like a cookie sheet, a cooling sheet. I'm in jail. <laughs> and I've got it on my pan, and the grease is just going to kind of drop down that way. I don't want greasy chops. Right? No, you don't want no greasy chops. The good grease. They really are. <laughs> um, but yeah, these are getting a good coat to them. Now, you don't want to flip-flop them a lot. You see, I try for two turns at the most. At the most. Um, you don't want to flip them for four times because you don't want your coating sticking to the bottom of the pan. It's awful to have breaded, fried pork chops with no bread on them. You know what I mean? So, you always kind of... I'm going to take my and just kind of ease up and make sure he's not stuck. If you flip flop them around before it's time to turn them, that's when it's going to stick. That's why you want a very hot skillet. You want to keep a hot skillet to have it's not sticking. You want that good crust. Now he has been giving me a little bit of trouble right there in that one spot. We're going to see. Okay. It did not fit good. But you'll have... Ooh, hey. It's a sauna. <laughs> okay, our beans are starting to boil. Them down. And then I took... I had some English cucumber in there. I just sliced it up. Sliced tomato up. That just... I like having those fresh veggies just on the table. That to me screams summer. Um, we would always have a cucumber tray and a tomato tray on the table. And onions, but I don't have peas. If you've got peas, you got to have slicing onions. I'm just saying. Them, them onions got to go to them peas. Um, and take and push them up on your fork with a knife. Yeah, buddy. Mmm. Good eating there. In fact, I, I did place a, a Walmart pickup order. I was going to say a small Walmart order. How come you think? Because we did that big Sam's order. And then I did a Walmart haul the other week. And now I'm doing another one. Don't let that down. <laughs> He's helping eat it. But no, um, it occurred to me as things, I started out with a curtain rod for Carol Beth, bulbs for my under the cabinet lights. I've had these lights up underneath here for eons, and they don't work no more because they need bulbs. So I ordered me some bulbs. I only ordered two. They would only let you order two. What's up with that? I need three. But they would only let me order two. I don't know. Oh, well, I guess. I take that back. I only need, yeah, I only need to one shorter than the other. Uh oh. I don't know what I'm going to do now, Mama. I think I could go out there and change it. Oh, my pork chops. Alright. But yeah. Just nothing screams summer like fresh. We used to call them relish trays. And you would have cucumber, tomato, onion. Certain instances, olives, but not always. My grandmother would. Um, and that was just always put on the table. That was an every night thing. And then when we had our farm, it was an every night thing. That table, um, that tomato, cucumber, and onion, and that just got put on the table, um, and you would snack on it, I've been eating cucumbers while I'm cooking, um, it's good to snack on while you're cooking, and then it just brings the pop of fresh to your meal, alright, I'm going to take him, we're going to call him done, 
would go be up pretty much there on that cookie rack. And that great grease is going to drain down. We're going to call him down. Take the drain off and put it there. And we're going to call him down. Because you don't want a dried out pork chop. Alright, now, that stuck just a smidge, but that's okay. The bread didn't actually come off the meat part. I think that just came off the bone. Alright, uh-oh, that fell through. I like knowing on the... Alright, we're going to take this guy. He stuck to the plate. We're going to take him. And we're just going to kind of block him in there. We're going to take him. Oh, Lord, don't let me drop him. You know, flop him in there. These two up in the sink. I've got my tea poured up. I've got to off my turn for work. All right, and now we're just going to let these, let these fry up, and then we're going to be ready to eat. Ooh, and I thought of something else I want to put on the table. This says Summer speaks Southern cooking to me. My sisters. And, well, it was my, it was our recipe. <laughs> so what we used to do when we had the farm, and my sister, this is what I helped her with, green tomato pickles. And a lot of y'all have asked. To me, they're like a savory, sour, sweet. Yeah, you know, it's like a sweet and sour. They are actually green tomatoes. Okay? You let them soak in lime water because they get crispy. Mm. They're sticky. Well, they're juicy. They are juicy because they're not that sticky. Mm. Oh, my God. Good with peas. Oh my stars and hennies. But I ate. <clears throat> yeah. And it's sour enough that it would take your breath away if you try to. If you try to talk it. I'm just gonna put this on my plate. Oh. Mm hmm. Hey y'all. But they're crunchy. They're. Oh. I can't eat them. There's Jaipur peas. But I ate some of the crunchies from the pork chop. See how it's got that big crunchy coat? Look at that. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I did that. And it spoke to me that I needed that green mud pickle. So I got them out, and I'm going to put them on the table. These other two are doing their thing. Green beans are good. I've got them on low. Just kind of keeping them warm. Those are still warm. And then our baked potatoes. Third up. So we are getting ready to eat. Fat man's doing a side job, so if he's not here, I'll just keep his warm for him. Bless his heart. He is working so hard. We need the extra money. I mean, I'm sure y'all are all in the same boat we are. So, yeah, you do what you got to do. I mean, you know. If something don't get paid, it don't get paid. As long as your basics are doing, Roof on your head. Food in your belly. Um. That, okay, now see, this is when you start watching it. See that burnt flour at the bottom? That flour will catch up if you ain't careful. I had a flour fryer when I was frying up a bunch of eggplant one time. It wasn't funny at all. Alright, so I'm going to keep an eye on those. 
and uh, get ready to call Carol Beth in a minute. I guess she could go ahead and fix her plate. I got enough pork chops made. I'm trying to get these two. I want to go ahead and get them done. Okay, so this is my plate. My potato. I got cheese and sour cream. There's my pork chop. I cut it to make sure that we're done. Green beans. My green tomato. Cucumbers, tomatoes. Carol Beth's coming. Carol Beth, can you get your meat? Yeah. You need help? No. Okay. Um, looking for and not finding the pepper. Do you see the pepper and salt in there, Angel? Know what I did with it. There's Carol Beth. Carol Beth, can you say hi? Hi. She's got her plate. Does it look good? Yup. Yep. What all do you like on your potato? Just cheese and butter. Cheese and butter. You don't like sour cream? Me. Oh, I thought you did. Okay. Well, all right. Well, that's going to be it. Glad you came with me today. And did all the things and did nothing and yeah yeah so until next time y'all hit that subscribe button hit that thumbs up give us a like let me know how you do your pork chops how do you like pork chops what is something that screams summer to you on your table yeah until next time bye y'all